Hello and welcome back to India on 99.94, your home of Indian cricket content with me, your host, Nikesh Raghani and Sara Waris of Wisdom, my co-host as always. Sara, how are you? Mm, good. It's getting a little warmer here. I hate the cold, so I don't know how the temperature is in England, but well, yeah, good for Yeah, me. <laughs> I mean, it's it's never too good. It's, it's warming up a little bit, to be honest, um, but I'm just looking forward to being out, I've been checking the weather for Nagpur for the first test and it looks pretty good, 32, 31, around that in the day. Um, so looking forward to that. Even Delhi looks not too bad for England standards. Um, maybe the air quality is something I, I need to be concerned about. Anyway, I'll, I'll deal with that at the time. Um we're here today to talk about the, first and foremost, the ODI series against New Zealand. India up to number one in the world after that clean sweep. And uh, what a clean sweep it was against a very strong side, it has to be said, New Zealand. They've just been to Pakistan. They've won in Pakistan. You know, 50 over World Cup finalists last time around. Um, done well in the T20 game as well. So across all Forms of cricket, really, test champions, you know, it's it, the list goes on. They're a very strong, formidable unit. Yes, they were missing some players in this series, but nonetheless, a really impressive win and, and some great individual performances from India as well. Yeah, I agree. And the matter of the way India won those games and the series, even against Sri Lanka, is what's heartening. You know, they uh, five times went batting first. Three or four times, I think, uh, they made more than 350 runs, which is a huge number. And even yesterday, and one game was close uh, when Bracewell hit that 100. But other than that, it was considerably one-sided. And even yesterday, when the, uh, the boundaries was very small and the commentators were going on about, you know, how even 380 could possibly be chased down because the boundaries were that small the bowlers just came and put on such a good show so that's what's more hearting you know it's not just that they won 3-0 but how convincing they are and the ODI World Cup is coming up so at home and possibly it'll be played at these venues similar venues or similar pitches not getting my hopes high because we all know India in world events and all. But uh, yeah, it's heartening to see it's a good start to the year. And Shubman Gill, I mean, look, he's almost reaching sky levels in T20 in the ODI game because it's just 100 after 100 after 100, double 100 in there as well. You know, an exclusive member of that very elite club, um, which is full of Indians, actually, incidentally. <laughs> And just awesome in this format. And there were question marks, weren't there, at the start of the Sri Lanka ODI series? Why is Shubman Gill playing? Why is Ishan Kishan not playing? Well, tell you what, the, the captain and coach and selectors have got this one right, haven't they? Whoever picked yeah, that team. Yeah, definitely. They were like, oh, how can you bench someone who scored a double hundred? And then Shubman Gill comes and just scores a double hundred so effortlessly. And what's more encouraging is, uh, as an Indian, it's his overall uh, game against spin. You know, we've seen uh, uh, Virat Kohli struggle against spin. We've uh, he, he got stumped off uh, Santner in one of the ODIs. And Gill's, uh, you know, overall game against spin is what's more encouraging. And uh, he has a very superior game against left arm spin and even um, right arm leg spin, so which is very important because uh, India doesn't have a lot of left handers in their top six, seven. You can say if Jadeja is there at number seven. So with the Rohit Sharma and Kohli and all struggling and with no left hand hander possibly with uh, Rishabh not round, uh, his. Game against left arm spin and even uh, leg spin, right hand leg spin is very crucial. So that's another one of the encouraging signs as a uh, as an Indian fan, I'd say. And you talked about spin there. Obviously, you know Virat Kohli's struggles against certain types of spin continue a little bit in this New Zealand series. Santner, you know, getting the better of him on a couple of occasions and. 
you know, it wasn't wasn't his best series. You can't expect him to perform every single game that he plays in. Um, but his form will, will overall still be encouraging. The way he's sort of uh, played since the start of the year, since since the Asia Cup, really, he's he's been in some tremendous form across formats, and hopefully that will continue into Test matches as well. Um, but Rohit Sharma, another big question mark against his form. He's been getting those starts, hasn't he? Those those fifties and those those quick starts at the top of the order. You felt something was coming. It's been a long time coming, but it just looked as though he's back in the groove as well, particularly in 50 over cricket, which I think is his best format as well. And a hundred after so long, and you know, the, the press obviously didn't let him forget how long it's been since he scored his last hundred in ODIs. Um, but you know, it was it was overdue. And we could kind of see it coming and, and it's the monkey off his back now. He can go and play freely now for the rest of the year without, I mean, maybe he doesn't take the pressure of not having that hundred, but but it's it's got to be a nice feeling. It's got to make him a bit more relaxed now that he's got there. Yeah, um, I don't know if you know uh, know about his answer also when he was asked about uh, his hundred after three years and Rohit Sharma said uh, he was almost uh, animated and angry when he said that, uh, but I've played only 12, uh, 12 ODIs in that period. So you want to make up your new stories, you can do that. But I've played only 12 yep. uh, matches in three years. And most or half of that, Obviously, because of COVID, there weren't any matches. Uh, yeah, in, uh, again, encouraging that Rohit Sharma is back you know, to form even his 83 against Bangladesh, where he scored with a fractured thumb that, the, you know, gave signs of uh, the Rohit Sharma we knew, the fighter that, you know, we know him to be and his 83, he could have got a century there also if he batted up the order. Uh, you know, but coming down at that position with injury and, you know, wickets falling at the other end, he just held uh, his one end up. And even in this series, he got a lot of starts. And yeah, uh, what my fear was that he he was getting those stars but not failing but not capitalizing on them so my fear was you know something like a t20 world cup something like that pans out because even before the t20 world cup he was getting those quick starts not able to score the 50s but we were like yeah okay you know he's a big tournament player and he'll do well come the t20 world cup but we all know how that panned out so sometimes yeah it's just good to get those centuries and uh, have runs behind your back going into these world events. So um, another positive for me. And as far as the bowling, that's also another, the rise of Shami Siraj. Siraj is now the world number one. So uh, I think we spoke about this in the last episode, but how do you just see Sh uh, Siraj's rise especially because that's been the story of, you know, since his test debut, he's just gone on to another level. There were question marks about his wide ball game, but he's just gone on to uh, excel in wide ball, ODI especially. Yeah. I mean, look, the potential was always there, wasn't it? From the start, you know, even when he sort of burst onto the scene in the IPL and then eventually made that test debut um, in that series against Australia, it it's a great story and, and look, it's not unique in terms of, I don't like to say rags to riches, but, you know, he's risen from humble beginnings to become this superstar. And I know that's not uncommon in India, but, you know, there, there are certain cricketers over the years who, who have been privileged to come from, you know, good upbringings, go to good schools, be able to get all the best coaching and, and then make their way into first class cricket and then the national team. Um, but, you know, look, he's had to cope with a lot. I mean, he didn't, you know, Mohamed Siraj, the, the concern I had about him was he came to cricket quite late in terms of proper cricket. He didn't hold a leather cricket ball, a real leather cricket ball until he was about 19, 20 years old. And that was one year before he got an IPL contract. So, you know, he came into it really, really late. It was all tape ball cricket. It was gully cricket. You know, his dad was an auto rickshaw driver. They, they, I don't think the dream was was there from a young age or they ever thought it possible that he could become this superstar cricketer. Um, so he came to it very late, then obviously, you know, made his debut, had to cope with the death of his father, you know, all that at such a young age, he's still a young man. And then for him to show this maturity to be the leader of the attack, that was the question mark. Has he got what it takes 
to go to that next level as a a leader of the attack, um, as as a more mature bowler in terms of you know planning how to get batters out, not just running up and bowling quick and you know bowling the odd jaffer and stuff, which he had the capability to do, but actually consistently bowling to a plan and and working batters over, and and that's what he's been doing, and that's what's been most impressive. And when you look at Shami, I mean Shami is almost making a point, isn't he? We spoke about it in the previous episode that if Jasper Bumrah comes back, it's probably Mohamed Shami who's going to miss out if everyone's fit because Siraj is undroppable, Umran Malik gives you that extra pace, something different. So if you're going to play three seamers, it's probably those three. But Shami's made the point that, all right, if if that's the case, then so be it. But don't forget, this is what I can do as well. And that's been heartening, hasn't it? Yeah. And one more thing about uh, Siraj's when he came up, there were a lot of talks. He is this passionate player. He wears his heart on his sleeve. There were times when, you know, he's giving these uh, wave offs. I don't know, when you dismiss a batsman and you just signal to them, I am forgetting the term. Uh, but, you know, and there was criticism of it. There was Sunil Gavaskar on commentary saying that, you know, you're a young man, just focus on your game because it's so easy to just uh, remain distracted with all this and all. But he's managed to, you know, combine that with his game and use that to his advantage. You know, he's used that aggression. He's channeled that aggression in the right way and not someone like a Sri Shant, you could say that, you know, he's just uh, gotten <laughs> distracted and uh, where even Dhoni would say that we're asking him to keep it under control and all. So uh, that's been another encouraging sign for Shami, that, uh, for Siraj, where he knows that, you know, what works for him and what doesn't work for him. Another bowler I would like, want to talk about is Shardul Thakur. You know, he picked up six wickets, uh, three wickets uh, in the third ODI, two, uh, two wickets in two balls, uh, partnership breaker, and he's just the lord. And it's so easy. Um, you're probably like, you know, why does he get the, how does he get those wickets? Because... Uh, you say he's the partnership breaker is it just luck or something and I remember there was this incident uh, where Ashwin when he picked up seven wickets I think in Cape Town last year where Ashwin was uh, heard in stump mic saying that whenever you come on to bowl you just pick up wickets I don't know how it is but you just pick up wickets so uh, that's another uh, you know he's just proving time and time and again that he can be that backup seamer to Hardik Pandya if he's uh, injured, hopefully, God forbidding, but if he's injured and uh, he's just, he's a very clever bowler. It's very easy to just diss, off, diss him off and say that, you know, okay, batters are at ease when he comes on to bowl, but it's just that he uses his test match lines well. You know, he targets the stumps. He has swing on offer. He gets the ball to seam around. He has bounce on offer. And he just mixes it up well. So it just leaves the batters, you know, in a dilemma as to which edge will it be the inside edge or what edge will carry on and all. So Shardul Thakur is another, uh, I think, positive for me from the series. We won't talk a lot about him because, yeah, okay, he's probably not in the 11 unless there are, you know, these injuries. But as a backup player for Hardik Pandya, he needs to improve on his bowling, but um, uh, on his batting. But yeah, as a bowler, he's proving time and again that he is a very serious cricketer. Absolutely. And yeah, it might not be in, in the first 11, but that's what's so heartening about this ODI setup now is that the the strength in depth is very very good, and you know there's there's still a couple of players potentially to come back into the side, and you know players who've been playing in their place have been performing really well. So that's that's what you want a, a strong squad of fifteen sixteen going into that World Cup. Right, we'll take a short break, and we'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Cricket's Conversation on ninety nine point nine four. Whatever your team, we have the show for you on podcast, YouTube or on the 99.94 app. We have India, England, South Africa, West Indies and now Sri Lanka covered. If you want to find us, the best way is to follow us on social media at 9994DM by downloading the 9994 app or Google 99.94 on podcast. We speak cricket. So just before we move on, I, I know you're a massive SRK fan, 
not not Shiva Ramakrishnan, the commentator, <laughs> ex-leg spinner, but Shah Rukh Khan. Um, Patan is out today yeah. as we speak, I believe. Today, yeah. You, you booked your not tickets? Been able, not been able to book my tickets yet. Not been able to find someone who will match the schedules, but hopefully I'll go this week sometime. Yeah, there's a lot of hype, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. There are shows from 5 a.m. Just can you imagine there are shows like from 5 a.m. and people are actually queuing up and going uh, for those shows. And what I feel is, you know, Shah Rukh Khan matches that level of superstardom that Virat Kohli has, you know, that global appeal. I don't know how you see uh, how his craze is in UK, but, you know, as someone who's grown up here and just seen him from the start there is Salman Khan there is Amir Khan but Shah Rukh Khan just has his own you know craze and he is almost like the Virat Kohli of oh, bigger than Virat Kohli yeah but uh, you know almost yeah, I, at that I mean, level yeah the reason Global I'm asking appeal, about that is yeah. because of that comparison and, and the fact that look Shah Rukh Khan's brilliant you know his his films are sort of, you know, all these golden films over the years will, will live in the memory forever and ever. But that kind of mm. stopped about, what, 10 years ago? Eight years ago? Yeah. <laughs> it's had a string of flops. Chugby. I mean, yeah, maybe, last, look, yeah. maybe the guy just needs to act his age, literally. Like, don't yeah. <laughs> don't act opposite 21-year-olds. You know, he's an old man now. right? He's in his, not old man, but you know what I mean? Compared to them, he's in his 50s. He's old enough to be their dad. And yeah, he looks good. He's in good shape. But, but you know, play a slightly older man, do some different roles, and you know, th- this looks like it might be something different. But he's had a string of flops. Basically, he's, it's like what people were saying about Coley for the last mm. three years, right? <laughs> Just out of form, probably finished. Is this the time where Shah Rukh Khan does a Virat Kohli and gets back in form? Yeah, and there was also this off-field drama. You know, Shah Rukh Khan had this whole thing with his son being in jail and the reports coming in that all those was fabricated and he was wrongly put in jail, etc. And then, you know, all the mess with Virat Kohli also. So it was just, you know, their timelines have almost matched. You know, their lows were together and now Virat Kohli is back and we hope that, you know, this year Shah Rukh Khan has three or four or three films lined up and you know, he can be the superstar that we all know him to be. His craze never fell, just like Kohli, his craze never fell. But you want these superstars to be at their peak and just do what they are here to do, entertain the fans and uh, just keep the fans happy. So uh, I am going for my sh- for the show sometime, definitely. Uh, I don't know if you are a big Shah Rukh Khan fan, but I've just... I was literally over the moon when, not literally over the moon, but yeah, over the moon when uh, he bought my the Kolkata team because I'm from Kolkata. I would have supported Kolkata even if Shah Rukh Khan hadn't bought it. I know so many people who support KKR just because of Shah Rukh Khan, but I never had that dilemma. And that was, you know, just a double joy for me that, okay, KKR bought by Shah Rukh Khan team. And it's still like a badge of honor for me that I support a team owned by Shah Rukh Khan, no matter how rubbish the team does. But, you know, you can always say it's by Shah Rukh Khan. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I look. I'm not not a massive fan of of him necessarily, although I think he's a f- fantastic actor and you know one of the the all time greatest uh, from the Hindi movie industry. Um, no denying that. I love a lot of his older stuff. Um, I mean, DDLJ, one of my favorites. Um, and then there was a whole string of them after that, wasn't there? So yeah, look, everybody in the UK um, from the Asian community and and even beyond actually. And it doesn't, not just Indians, I'm talking, the entire South Asian community in the UK just seems to love him and follow everything that he does. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure they'll they'll all be turning out to watch Bhutan as well. Um, and I'm going to make just a bit of a film thing. connection. Yeah, just Go one on, more you, thing. You carry, make your yeah. point and then. Uh, yesterday I was just uh, listening to Chaya Chaya, that song by Shah Rukh Khan, 90s, mid-90s. Um, he's on top of the train and all that iconic song. And yesterday um, I-, I saw a video of Rob Key, uh, who was then covering the <laughs> Pakistan versus Australia series, I think, uh, actually listening to that song on, on his phone and grooving to it. So, you know, that that is uh, almost like a call. You can hate him, you can be indifferent to him but you can't ignore him like somehow the other you're just 
okay, Shah Rukh Khan is here. You know, okay, Virat Kohli is here. So it's almost like that kind of an appeal. Absolutely. And I was going to make the film connection as well because um, Sunil Shetty, another yeah. famous superstar of uh, of Hindi cinema, um, has waned a little bit in recent years. He he does act more his age. He's probably of a similar age to Shah Rukh, actually, but plays slightly older roles now and, and stuff. Still, you know, he's, he's still an active man, still in good shape and stuff. His daughter has married Kale Rahul. Um, mm-hmm. So Kale Rahul not playing at the moment and and was off getting married. Um, so congratulations to him. Um, that That's great news. How, how has that gone down in India? Again, the craze of a Bollywood celebrity marrying a cricketer is always high. We saw that with Anushka Virat and there were a few others who followed. So obviously there are those paparazzi stationed outside for hours and hours and, you know, trying to just get the exclusive pictures. And we saw a lot of exclusive pictures, which is invading their privacy, but that's the culture in India that you don't care about anyone's privacy. So, yeah... Good for them, happy for them, and good wishes for them, and just hope that he can now come back and do well in the BGT, which is what he will be needed to do now in the next few months here. Absolutely. Right, we'll take another short break, and we'll be back in a moment. If you love the language of cricket and want more, then head over to the 99.94 app and you can hear all of our podcasts and cricket commentary. We're adding new shows all the time and covering cricket series from all over the world. Be the first to hear all of our announcements by following us on social media at 99.94 DM. Welcome to Cricket's Conversation. Right, let's let's get back to the cricket. I know we had a little bit of a, a Bollywood section there, which was it's always good fun linking Bollywood and cricket. Um, never any issue with that. But it's also, as we record today, tomorrow is Republic Day in India, and and for those who are listening, and, and there are people who listen who are not from an Indian background, Independence Day is different to Republic Day. Independence Day, fifteenth of August to celebrate the the day when India became an independent country and Britain sort of no longer was was running things out there. Um, Republic Day, for a non-Indian audience, tell us why it's different, what, what it means, or is it just another celebration of the same thing? No, it's the day when the constitution came into effect. Uh, but that's... That's why Republic Day is celebrated. This was in 1950, I think. So, yeah, uh, Republic Day has been celebrated since then. And it's always just a, such a good time to just look back and think of the moments that make you feel proud to be an Indian because we've grown up celebrating these two days and singing the national anthem and having these functions in school and being shown, you know, this is what it means to be India and your freedom fighters fought for this and that, uh, all the things. and we are here now living in an independent country. So it's just always good to look back and look at the moments, you know, in the recent past, um, not and overall to just see the moments that helped making India uh, the country it is today. And, you know, just from A.R. Rahman winning the Oscars for Jai Ho, which I personally felt wasn't his best song. There were a lot of others, like Chaya Chaya, for example, is one. But, you know, it's always good to be honoured uh, by the global audience. And even the recent song, the Nattu Nattu, uh, which won the Global Globes and has now gone to the Oscars. So, things like that. And in cricketing field, there have been so many. And the, uh, the first instance that I can think of is... I started watching cricket early 2000, uh, 2007, 2008, obviously the T20 World Cup. But more than that, I think it was the 2008 uh, game in Chennai between England and um, India, where, you know, after the terrorist attacks, England had flown back home and it was very kind of them to return and play that series, the test series. And uh, due to Sachin Tendulkar, they were chasing 350-odd and Sachin Tendulkar scored his 100. And it was just, um, you know, a statement that, you know, Mumbai car coming in, the terrorist attacks had been in Mumbai 26-11. And a Mumbai car coming in and 
just saying that okay this is the spirit kind of you know you can't keep a mumbai kar down you can't keep an indian down whatever happens we will rise up so i think that was the first um, emotional kind of you know test uh, test match that i was watching so that was very um, that has still remained uh, very special to me and uh, even the 2008 perth test match where you know there was so much going on before that there was the whole thing with andrew simons and harbhajan saying and uh, the umpiring decisions and all and no one gave them a chance and uh, 2008 was the start of uh, you know showing them that we can believe and showing the others that we are at our best when we are at our lowest sort of a thing so absolutely it, yeah i mean yeah. that that such an innings in in chennai in particular i think it was 380 odd they were chasing actually saywag yeah. yeah. got them off to the flyer and then sachin finished it off with Yuvraj that 100 with that last well shot with yuvraj at the other end yeah, yeah. brilliant and and just what it meant after the the terror attacks in mumbai as well and it was just fantastic scenes i mean for me there's there's been a lot of moments there's i mean the 2002 natwest trophy final at lords mm-hmm. to do it at lords to chase 325 in those days that's like chasing 450 now you're five down all of your best batters are out right you've got you've got a world class mm-hmm. at that time top 4 or 5 so you've got Sewa Ganguly who are opening Dravid was coming in 3 Sachin was coming in 4 and then Lakshman I think it was at 5 so you've got literally world class top 5 all of them gone right <laughs> with less than half the runs on the board it's game over I know Ganguly and Sewa got them off to a great start but then they lost those 5 wickets and and that was it right Indians were streaming out of lords we were you know having to tell them to stay don't worry you know you've raj is still there just watch till he comes and you know there, there was a group of punjabis i remember my my dad telling them they they started streaming out when um you've raj got out right and that big partnership between he and kaif and that came to an end and there was still a long way to go so this group of sadars started leaving and then he was stopping them saying no 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 budgie is coming in next budgie is in next don't worry <laughs> So they're like all right yeah, yeah yeah let's let's just stay watch budgie and stuff and then budgie hit that six into the grandstand and contributed and gumble was given out when he shouldn't you know just brilliant mm-hmm. scenes and then the ganguly shirt wave on the balcony at lords just what that signified i think not only just giving it back to andrew flintoff mm-hmm. who did it in mumbai previously when they drew the series 3 all i mean i wouldn't be celebrating my shirt off just to draw anything in in life um you know is is not the mentality that I'd have anyway um but to win that series at lords and then to to do that on the bout an indian doing that on the balcony at lords it it was almost the start of the power shift from cricket in england and then that power base shifting to india because all right the icc might be based in dubai and it used to be based at lords and that that doesn't mean anything is the bcc holds all the power and and it was kind of that shift and it wasn't you know there there are some things which are, are not good about the power that the bcc holds and you know it, it would be nice if other boards could make as much money and contribute as well and and you know we want to see a bit more of a level playing field but it's just not the case but just india as being looked down upon for all these yeah. years through the 80s through the 90s even before that in the 70s even though they won some significant series and then for him to be saying almost f u english cricket and the mm. institution and the mcc you know all that kind of stuff just by doing that i think just what it signified meant a lot the border gavaska trophy 2001 or mm. whatever it was called then <laughs> i can't remember if if it was called the border gavaska trophy then or it was probably i think the the following think series was, where they yeah. introduced it or maybe a couple of series after that um but yeah i mean look what can you say about that right eden gardens just brilliant to beat that side that side that arguably the greatest test side ever mm-hmm. across men's and women's cricket you know just brilliant and and what that meant for indian cricket ganguly's captaincy coming back over match fixing and and all that stuff and and just to take india into the light once again after being in the dark so many great moments 2011 world cup remember that 
Definitely, yeah. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not Mataram even being sung I'm, inside yeah. the Wankari Stadium. I've not even uh, spoken of the most obvious moments because obviously that moment has to be on top for me. I didn't obviously I didn't watch 1983, but yeah, that moment that Vandi Matram, I I still remember it, and whenever I come across clips of that moment, it still gives me the same amount of goosebumps. And I remember the cricketers saying that they had goosebumps listening to it um, in the dressing room. So can you imagine the kind of uh, atmosphere that would have been there at that time? Absolutely, and. Look, Border Gavaskar Trophy, two away wins in the last two, which is fantastic. Never been done before, and then they go and do it twice. It's like London buses. You know, you don't get one for ages, then two come along at once. Um, just brilliant. The, the first one, I think, to, the second one was the better series and the, the, the comeback and the fact that they had literally, like they were almost calling up the physio and, you know, stuff to yeah. play in that final test. It was ridiculous. Um, and, and to win from that position, to draw in Sydney and then to win at the Gabba, you know, just putting their bodies on the line. I don't think that will ever be matched in terms of cricket and, and just the comeback and the 36 all out to that. You know, it was just the stuff of Bollywood scripts, really. We talked about Bollywood before. If, if Bollywood wanted a script, that's the perfect script and it was real. Um, but the first one, in terms of meaning a bit more, like, the first time you've you've beaten Australia in Australia. And I don't know if you've seen the videos mm. that the the Bharat Army, the Indian fan group, put up on their social media after that. They were waiting. They got permission somehow to wait, yeah. uh, just a few of them, to wait in the hotel entrance. They were using like a back entrance to the hotel that the Indian players were coming through. And, and they got permission to wait in that lobby area and just play the dolls and just clap the players as, as they came in mm. and it ended up into a little bit of a party. They, they started singing. So, you know, Kohli was dancing, doing Pangra, they, you know, Pujara was in there. They were all getting involved and they were, you know, all signing the shirt for the Bharat Army as well, um, which was auctioned off, I believe. And it was just brilliant. They were literally just mm. partying with the Indian fans and there, there weren't loads of fans. So that made it easier. There were only three or four, I think in there and a couple of doll players as well. But just yeah. brilliant, absolute scenes. And, and those are the moments which, you know, they'll remember forever, we'll remember forever. Hmm. Yeah, and it's almost like, you know, when India is at its lowest, as I said earlier, that is when they are at its best. You, you just, oh, you're just like India have no chance and they can't. After 36 all out, you saw all these criticism, or, um, not criticism, all these predictions that... in it's over for India, Kohli is heading back, it's over, they have no chance, it's only going to get worse and all that. And that's when they just rise and it's a very dramatic statement maybe to make, but that's what sums up the situation in the country also as of now. You know, India is grappling through so much, through all this hate and uh, religious fights and everything but when it's at its lowest you know we just know that okay this country is hanging in there there and it's going to just rise up because that that's what the spirit is and uh, I have stayed here um, I know because uh, when we are at its lowest we we've um, always you know not given a chance to these uh, hate mongers or whatever to just divide us further so there is hope that whatever we are going through right now with all these uh, the media news and all the hatred that is being propagated but it's for something better and uh, this is its lowest and it's just we are just going to rise up again I know it's a very dramatic statement to make but that's what I believe in but um, that's what the that's what India is about and it's a very patriotic ending to the episode but I have my hopes and just hope for cricketing wise also this is a very memorable year and even otherwise. Absolutely and after all that chat I, I can't wait to get out there and it's less than two <laughs> weeks to go now till till I'm out there in Nagpur for that first test match so really can't wait we'll of course have lots more for you um while that, that series is going on, of course, and in the build-up to that, uh, we've got the Women's T20 World Cup going on. There's, there's there's loads of stuff happening 
in the world of Indian cricket. So uh, we'll try and keep you across as much as we can, but that's all we've got time for on this episode. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you.